Hi there. So today I'll be showing you facet anchors. Really quickly, we'll be going over facets themselves and how they work. So if I actually hold one dashboard button and then double tap the other, I'll go into UI edit mode. Now UI edit mode allows me to edit facets. This is important because we'll need it later. So next I'll close the UI edit mode and actually open up my dashboard and go into smooth POV so you can see. So in here under user interface, we actually have the section here called facet anchors where you can enable them. And then there's a toggle controller here, which basically changes whether you open them with the dashboard button on the left or on the right controller. You can also change how fast they open. For example, now the animation is really fast. And now I die before it finishes the animation. So let's actually set this to something like 649, 694 because I want them to be very snappy. Now, you can also enable show background here or disable it. Now, the background is essentially the area where you put your facets. So if I enable this, you'll have this glassy backdrop. If I disable it, it will just be the facets. Now, by default, your facet anchors will actually be positioned a little bit differently from me. So by default, it'll look like my right hand here, where one of them is on your palm, one's off the top of your head, one's at the top of your arm, and one's on the bottom of your arm. And then there's also the ones that are in front of you. If you go back in the edit mode, you can actually see this grid that is in front of my vision, where I can actually grab a facet and move it around. So, how you position a facet is very simple. You just grab a facet, and if it's just being held normally, like just like with a laser just floating there like this, you want to bring it to your hand so it equips, and then you can just point with your laser at a facet receiving surface and either let go to apply it in the size that it currently wants to be, or you can also hold the trigger, and then drag it to apply to a different size as long as it supports it. I'm actually going to make this small again and then put it back on here. They also remember their last size, so do keep that in mind. It's very useful to positioning them. If you have shaky hands, it's a little bit difficult to put them on your head because your head is going to be moving around and your hands are going to be moving around. But yeah, now one neat thing about them is that they actually allow you to edit where they are positioned on each avatar. So for this avatar here, I actually have the palm one floating off like this, and I have one of the top at the bottom arm one on my hand like this. Now, way you do that is just by going into your avatar, specifically the forearm or the hand, and then in here, there's things called facet anchors. And you can simply move those. So if you select this, you can move it up a bit. So now it's no longer clipping into my hands. Now, one important thing is that while these here are in the world, these anchors, you don't have to be worried about what you put on them. Because while the anchors are in world, anything that you put on these anchors here are in user space, meaning they're not visible to anyone but yourself. They're part of private UI, which is also why you currently can see my recording camera here because I have show private UI enabled. Now, spawning facets is a little bit different than spawning items because the way it works is if we go to the inventory, instead of double tapping like this to get a little thing in world, which also doesn't follow us if we move around, we actually have to click it once. And then we have to click Spawn Facet at the left top, which will spawn out the facet in user space. And you can make sure it's in user space by letting go of it and just moving. And it should be moving with you because it's actually not moving around in the world, but in your user space, which is also where your dashboard is, which also moves with you. So then we can just grab this facet again, 
move it closer to equip it. Open up these little settings here. Go into UI edit mode by holding one dashboard button and double tapping the other. And we just slap our online status on here. And there we go. We just added a facet. Now, because of how these things work, as in you can position them on your avatar any way you want, you can go a little bit more fancy than just repositioning them. For example, if you've noticed on my left hand, the bottom one actually always rotates to face me. And the way that works is if I go to my, ah, this is the right hand, I need the left hand. I go to my left hand, facet anchor bottom, and this one is the hand one. But I have two of them, one of them here, is actually the one from the bottom of the arm, and the other one here is the one from the hand. So I simply put a look at user on here, and that look at user just makes it so that the facet anchor always looks at me. But because of how facets work, it actually needs to be set to invert, so it technically looks away from me, because otherwise it would show the back of it to me at all times. Now, another thing you need to make sure is to enable target at local user. Otherwise, it's not going to be looking at you unless you put in your user here. But since targeted local user exists, you should be like you should use it. There's, there's no reason not to. It just makes it a lot more easy. Now, if you want to do it as like fresh from start, you literally just go to a facet anchor, move it where you want it to be, and then just go to transform, drivers, uh, look at user, which we have here, targeted local user, and invert. And there we go. Now the arm one actually faces me, so no matter how I have my arm positioned, I can always see it well. So I can now grab this one here and put it over here. Actually, let's put this on the left side, because it looks nicer on the left. Grab the voice, put it here, and grab our X. We already have the online status on there. And there we go. Now this always is in my view. So if I move my arm, it actually rotates to face me. Now, what you can also do, which might be a little fun to just play around with, is with this one here, I can go to Attach Component, Transform, Drivers, and we'll actually put a smooth transform on it. So now, if I move it around, you'll see that the UI lags up behind me a little bit. However, it's now a little bit slow, so I set this to like 10 on the speed. So now there's a little bit of a flow to it. And not too fast, not too slow, but it's, it makes it look a little bit more dynamic and so on. Now, facets pretty much can be anything you want. You can make anything you want really into a facet. Uh, it, it fully supports protoflux. It fully supports components. Anything can be a facet. If you wanted to, you could literally use WebSockets to talk to Spotify, like to a Spotify app on your computer, and then put a little button on here, a play button and a stop button, and control Spotify playback through your little facet if you made one. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, one final thing I'll show is just, again, if you go into your settings menu, you can, for example, grab a setting from here, like earmuff mode, like this on the side. And then you can enable the edit mode and just slap it right down by clicking and dragging. And now we have earmuff mode on here. So we can easily change our EMF setting. But yeah, I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you had fun with facet anchors. And if you have any ideas for a future video, do let me know. Bye bye.